Good evening, everybody at Patriots Path Council. My name is Orchard Jones, and I will be your MC tonight. First off, I would like to introduce our council president, Mr. Mark Talmadge. Welcome, everyone, to our 2020 version of the Trade Show of Scouting. I, uh, I really hate the phrase that people are using, the new normal. Uh, this isn't normal. This is something very different. And uh, as you all know, scouts and scouters alike, we like to get together. We were social people. We like to be out uh, outside together. We like to be in meetings together. We like to work on things together. So uh, all of this being apart, while it's new, it's not normal, and hopefully it won't become normal. But uh, welcome to all of you uh, this evening. I'm glad you all dialed in. We have quite a number of people that uh, have registered and dialed in to um, our little town hall tonight. And um, I thank you all. And let me say, um, I'll be back later during the question and answer session, but thank you all, uh, scouts and scouters alike, for all you continue to do uh, during this uh, strange time of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic as we uh, social distance and try to scout from home uh, and stay active and keep with the program. So I'm glad you're all here and I look forward to speaking with you all a little bit later. Let me turn it back over to, I guess, Archer. Thank you, Mark. Uh, at this time, I would like to introduce several members of our Order of the Arrow Lodge. We'll be going ahead and doing our opening ceremony this evening. So at this time, I call upon Mike Fowler, Josh Dennis, and Jesse Germano to please do our opening ceremony. You have the floor, gentlemen. Scout sign, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America. and to the republic for which it stands, and one nation, one nation under, God, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice yeah. for all. Two. And I have you raise your scout sign to the scout oath. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country, to obey the scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight, too. Scout law. A scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent, too. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, as Mr. Jones has mentioned, um, my name is Jesse Germano, and I am the Lodge Chief for Wapalani Lodge, uh, which is our home lodge of, Wapala of the Order of the Arrow for Patriots Path Council. Um, so the, the um, Order of the Arrow is a National Honor Society of Scouting, as some of you may know. Um, so what the OA does is um, we're responsible for making sure that we give back to council camps um, and we give others um, the opportunity to give service uh, to others. So. Um, something that's kind of been halted these past few months uh, seems to have been our unit elections where scouts are given the opportunity to join the Order of the Arrow and come in and complete their um, induction process. Um, so something that uh, we've been able to develop these past few months are uh, virtual unit elections. Uh, so if you're interested in any way, uh, we can show you how to run a meeting if you're not having, currently having any meetings online. So we're, part of the plan was we're going to be showing, showing units how to have um, a virtual meeting um, and then we can conduct their order of the arrow election uh, to recognize the scouts that go above and beyond the call of service. Thanks, Jesse. Uh, I'd like to just go over a couple of uh, current events and a uh, couple other things. During the webinar, you can ask questions by clicking on the Q&A icon on the bottom of your screen. We will have a few panelists answering questions behind the scenes while the webinar is in progress. Toward the end of our webinar, our scout executive, Mark Andreo, will come on live and answer several questions alongside of our panelists. Questions not answered on the call will be posted on our cancel website, along with a recording of tonight's webinar. Scouting strong. So what are we doing out there? Well, dens, packs, patrols, troops, Crews, they're all meeting. They're meeting virtually. We're having boards of review. We're having Eagle Scout boards of review. We've had Arrow of Lights cross over in the Scouts. I had the privilege of working with a young Scout who just crossed over recently, earning the fingerprinting merit badge over Zoom. Never thought I would say that. Never thought I would do that. But we are still out there and scouting is strong. 
wanted to tell you a quick little story about something that happened during this pandemic. So as you might know, I am a New Jersey State Trooper, and we hold a camporee every few years down in Seagirt. And there's a Maryland Trooper who's an Eagle Scout. He comes to that camporee every year to, Mer to represent the Maryland State Police. One of his squad mates was deployed up to New York City to the Javits Center as part of the Maryland National Guard for the COVID-19 pandemic. So he called me up. He said, Arch, I got a problem. My squad mate's up in New York. Him and his unit members, they need supplies. We need to get them to him. I've got a relay to, to Delaware. I got a relay to get up to Jersey. I need you to get the stuff through Jersey up to New York so they can deliver it to the squad mates. So we set up a relay. We got six boxes of supplies up to that National Guard unit from Maryland up in New York. And uh, it was all through scouting. It, helped, it came about because two Eagle Scouts that knew each other got together and helped each other out. And that's what scouting is all about, helping other people out. So during this, uh, this webinar, we're gonna be talking about the new Senior Patrol Leader Roundtables that are coming up this month. We're gonna be talking about the trade show of scouting. We will be going over the new membership fee structure that you may have heard about, but we'll also be talking about a discount code for the first order at PPC Outfitters, our new online uh, ordering system through the council. At this time, we're gonna go ahead and show a video about day camp. Andrew, take it away. All right, Ernie, I don't know, man. This whole thing has been crazy, hasn't it? I mean, Sabatis isn't going to open this summer, so you're not going to camp up there for the first time in a long time. Camp Summers isn't opening this summer, so you're not going to camp there. You don't have thumbs, so you can't go on the computer to do virtual camp with PPC Outdoor Academy. But, you know kind of hoping that we're going to get to do Camp Winnebago this year. I mean, everybody's excited. Steve, We've been working hard, okay? Kurt, not, huh? Hi, Dave. Are, are you hey. okay? Were you talking to the dogs again? Yeah, you know, Ernie's, Ernie's been real down in the dumps with this COVID-19 thing. And, uh, Keith, you know, Keith, Keith, Keith! Have you heard? No, heard what, what Dave? on. Murphy said. Day camps can open. Can nice. Healer. That's there. awesome. That is awesome. Ernie, Ernie. Cub Scout Day Camp is on. Governor Murphy said. That is the best news I've heard in months, Dan. Thanks for chiming in, buddy. Rich, do you got that? I'm there, man. I'm excited. We got registrations open, ready to roll. Oh, that's so awesome. You know, we were telling everybody on the webinar about that and the, the whole, you know, the whole plan, the whole team was on board for that webinar with the parents. We got to get that posted online. Is that online, Rich? Already is. People just got to go online, check it out. I was thinking the council should do like a webinar, like a town hall meeting where we could do like, you know, we could talk to people and make sure they knew that Cubs, Cub Day Camp was going to be on. That would be an awesome idea. Keith, yeah. is, isn't that happening? Oh, yeah. Man, this is all falling together beautifully. It is awesome. It's awesome. You know, I can't wait because, you know, we, we have such an awesome program, and, and we've set this up so organized that I would send my five grandchildren to it. I really hope parents will sign up. What do you think? I don't know. If, if I'd send my grandchildren to it, you know, I think parents should send their kids to it, too. I'm going to sign my two kids up. Sweet. Well, as a mom, if my little guy was old enough, he'd be there. He's been talking about camp all winter. Oh, sweet. So, uh, do you think Ernie's going to be pleased with the news? Is he going to be a little, a little more relaxed around the house? I, I think Ernie's going to be ecstatic knowing that he's going to get to go to camp a couple days a week and, and hang out with everybody and, and check out the camp. And, and plus, just going to camp in general with, with every, all those kids, I'm excited. Cub Scout Day Camp is by far the best. Absolutely, best. my friend. I agree. All right, well, i got to get back to work, and you guys got to get back to work. 
So I'll see you at camp. See you there. Bye. Bye. Great job, everybody. Uh, at this time, we're going to go ahead and jump into a popcorn commercial. Popcorn gives me great adventures and a brighter future. Scout me in! It was amazing. My shy little guy. The confidence he gained just by selling popcorn and earning his own way. It really helped him know that he could do more than what he thought he could do. We're here to help you sell more popcorn than ever by practicing how you present popcorn to the customers in our community. First, it's important to use the Camp Masters program script so we all look the best and share how great scouting is with kids. It doesn't focus on selling popcorn. It's all about scouting. Teaching a child how to step out of their comfort zone helped him grow so much and to trust his own abilities. Practicing helps me feel better about asking strangers to support my troop. Be proud of the fundraising you are doing for your unit and all the great activities you get to participate in because of it. Be enthusiastic about what scouting means to you. And don't forget to bring your best accessory, a smile. Scout's popcorn is our favorite. Woo! Great job, everybody. And now we'll have a commercial for our PPC Academy. Hey, James. Hey, what's up, Amanda? Uh, we need to get the word out about the PPC Outdoor Academy that's happening June 29th to July 31st. Got any ideas? Um, what if we made like a cheesy Zoom call so that we could socially distance, uh, but we make it look like a natural conversation, but really we're just reading right off a script? Yeah, that's perfect. I think that would actually work. I'm pretty sure we can pull it off. Yeah. You know, I'm just like, I'm so sad that we're not going to be able to be at Camp Summers this year. You know, I, I'm going to miss the camp family so much doing things like merit badges and all of those fun things, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I really think. I was really, I, like, I was looking I forward to I'm going to do summer. without Camp Summers. Yeah, me neither. I Did someone that. say Camp Summers? Oh, hey, David. Did, did you guys know that when you go to Camp Summers, you actually become a part of the Camp Summers family? And there are so many fun things to do there besides... And there's camping with your troop, earning merit badges. You also have the opportunity to slide down an inflatable iceberg in the middle of the lake. You get to climb a natural rock face, ride an ATV, participate in canoe wars. There's You can go on the astronomy watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, the list thanks, is thanks. endless. Yeah, we aren't here to talk about Camp Summers, unfortunately. We're here to talk about the PPC Outdoor Academy. Yeah. Oh. We're, you know, oh. We're in the middle of something, so. My bad. Yeah. Okay. Uh, see you later, thanks, Dave. Dave. All right, see ya. Bye, guys. So um, anyway, getting back on track, um, what do you think people need to know about PPC Outdoor Academy? I mean, like, we have so many merit badges to offer. There's Eagle required ones like the citizenships and environmental science. But we also have other merit badges that might be a little more, uh, you know, not found as often. Things like oceanography, game design, those kind of things. Yeah, they definitely need to know that all the merit badges are being taught by current or former Camp Summers staff members. And the staff of the PPC Outdoor Academy are highly qualified and trained in all BSA policies and procedures. We chose the best of the best to impart the wisdom to our scouts. It's perfect because all ses session sizes are small and everyone will get the attention they need to learn new skills and complete requirements. Yeah. I think it's cool that many of the instructors are teaching badges that are in their career areas. That's pretty neat. Yeah, and participants, that's a great point. Yeah, participants and their families can also click on Meet the Staff link on the PPC Outdoor Academy webpage and get to know our staff members a little bit. True. You know, even more important is that we're going to have two 21-year-olds on every call, uh, whether it's a large group session, small group session, individual yeah. session. So we're going to be in compliance with youth protection. Oh, hey, yeah, Amelia, definitely. what's up? Uh, Amelia, Is we're the local trailblazer program. But no, we're actually doing something right now. But I mean, if you they all know that we offer a day camp option for scouts of all ages. It's pretty awesome because the scouts can hop on a bus near their houses, come to camp to participate in our programs, and then head home after a long, fun day. It's such a great opportunity for first-year scouts and even older scouts that have evening commitments that do not allow them to stay over at camp. Mm -hmm. I love that we have some scouts that come for a week of resident camp and a week of trailblazer camp as well. There are so many options. Anyway, I can't believe I won't get to see all of our trailblazer scouts this summer. I am so bummed. But my glass is always half full and I'm super psyched for 2021 when we welcome scouts off the buses at Camp Summers once again. Thanks for listening and good luck doing whatever it is you're doing. All right. Thanks, Amelia. So optimistic. Yeah. You know. Bye. Thanks. Thanks, Amelia. 
Uh, so, um, moving along, why don't we talk about how easy it is to register for merit badges at PPC Online Academy? Yeah, and refresh me on that one because you're more technical than I am. So, uh, you know, it's really simple. Um, firstly, the um, parents can go to ppcoutdooracademy.org, uh, which is our website, and there's a whole bunch of things there. There's so many resources. Um, there's obviously a link to register, but you can find a letter to the parents explaining what we're doing for the year. Uh, you can see uh, a Meet the Staff page. There's a Frequently Asked Questions page. And right at the bottom of every web page is our contact information in case anybody has any questions. You know, um, and there's a link right at the top that says register now. You can just click it. It's just that simple. Okay, that's good. I'm glad we made it as simple as possible. Yeah. So, yeah, it'll be quick and easy to get for people to get on there and register. Yeah. Hey, hey Abby. Hey. Hey, we're doing something right now, so. Okay, well, anyway, I love working with Look at Camp Summer, such a great opportunity for scouts to come to camp and focus on an area that they love. It's something that I look forward to every single summer. I know we're not sure yet if we'll be able to have specialty week this summer, but if we don't, I can't wait for 2021. Scouts can sign up for aquatics, backwoods engineering, shooting sports, and climbing. We're a rather innovative staff, so who knows, maybe we'll add another specialty week next summer. All right, thanks, Abby. Oh, thanks, Abs. Bye, guys. Um, all right, this family is just one ten away from a full-blown circus, James. Yeah, I know. It's you, crazy. You know how hard it is for me to stay focused, all these interruptions. So yeah. anything um, else we need to make sure everyone knows? Well, I, I feel like the last, the most, you know, another thing we need to kind of talk about is the fact that we're going to have a follow-up day in the fall uh, where scouts can meet with their instructors and finish up any requirements they didn't get to finish. Or if there's a requirement that takes a long time, like, for example, in family life, there's a 90-day chore chart. Uh, they can meet with their counselors and we can kind of figure that out. I mean, we're obviously going to have to comply with all state mandates and social distancing procedures, but the scouts will be able to come up, meet with their counselors, and maybe finish up badges that they didn't get to. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. I'm glad we're doing yeah. that, too. Yeah, I almost forgot to mention that. Yeah. Oh, what's that? Hey, Ben, oh, we're, oh, hi, ben. we're in the middle Hello. of something, Ben. We, guys, what's up? What do you, you guys want to go to a social distance Zoom party tonight? I started up with some of the staff. It's going to be so great. We're going to do a theme, um, like, like superheroes, and we were going to dress up in costumes. Wouldn't that be cool? Uh, well, maybe, Ben, but we'll, why don't we talk about this later, you know? Yeah. We're, oh. uh, we're in the middle of filming a promo for PPC Outdoor Academy right now. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. I hope I didn't mess it up. Well, I'll see you on the Zoom tonight, guys. Um, James, bring your web shooters. They're super cool. James, do yeah. you have web shooters? No, yes, not so at all. Cool. That would be embarrassing if I had those. Pretty embarrassing. You should look pretty embarrassed right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, yeah. Right. So anyway. Um, all, right. all right. To wrap this up, I think since we can't be together at Camp Summers this summer, this is a great alternative to help scouts work on advancement and continue with the scouting program. Yeah, agreed. I mean, it, it really stinks that we're not going to be able to be at Camp Summers to – you know, work with the scouts and get their advancement done. But I'm really glad that we're offering this thing that the scouts can work on merit badges, can still move through the scouting programs. And it's so simple. Just go to ppcoutdooracademy.org. I mean, it's so easy. Yeah, that's great. I can't wait to see scouts on the screen and see familiar spaces with our camp staff family. Yeah, absolutely. All right, James, I got to head out. All right. Bye, Amanda. Take care. Bye. Great job, uh, James and Amanda. Thank you for that. Uh, at this time, we're going to turn it back over to our OA Lodge Chief, Jesse Germano, who's going to talk about Unit Elections Live. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Jesse Germano. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Uh, so talking once again about Unit Elections, uh, Unit Elections are really important to have in your home troops. Uh, they showed, um, they help to recognize scouts that are um, go above and beyond the call of service in their home troops um, and exemplify uh, cheerful service um, in their daily lives. Um, so if again if you're interested in uh, signing up for a unit election which we highly recommend um, you can either contact myself our lodge advisor Mr. Foy, um, our vice chief of administration Josh Danis or our unit elections chairman um, Liam Doherty. Or if you can't contact any of those other people, but you do have contact information for one of our chapter chiefs, uh, please reach out to them and we can uh, get you all set up. Thanks, Jesse. Uh, at this time, we're gonna have something on our scout shop and our PPC Outfitters. Uh, so what you're seeing is a brand new website. 
uh, set up by our scout shop staff, Steve Byrick, Wayne Neiman. It's PPC Outfitters. So everything that the scout shop sells is available for an online purchase. Um, and we, um, so you don't have to come into the shop. You can place your, you don't, or you don't have to email 358 scout shop at Cedar Knowles or at Mountainside. So everything that you're looking for can be purchased online. So this is brand new. It's like 95% uh, completed, and, uh, but it is ready to be used at any time. So, uh, so we do have two questions we, we, uh, we'd like to get some information on, uh, and you can just click on one and answer it. Uh, would you like brand name products or PPC branded for the same quality? You know, do you want, uh, and I'm just gonna pick on Coleman and a few brands like that, or which for a PPC branded product, uh, as long as it's the same quality. And would you prefer to pick up in one of our shops or ship for an additional fee? If you don't mind, just answer those questions and then we can uh, move, move forward with some planning for PPC outfitters. Thank you. Great, thanks Mark. Uh, at this time, we're going to have a video on revenue development. Hi, everyone. My name is Jim Agar, and if any of my scouts are watching, it's still Mr. Agar to you. I'm the father of three boys who love being scouts. I'm also fortunate to serve as a leader in my son's units, as a merit badge counselor, and as a member of the Patriots Path Council Executive Board. You know, over the past two and a half months, the pandemic and the resulting shutdown of, well, just about everything, have reinforced my deeply held belief as a scouting alumnus, parent, and leader that now, more than ever, America, indeed our future, depends on the scouting program. Indeed, scouting continues, just as it has through two world wars, the Great Depression, national civil unrest, and yes, even prior epidemics. Scouting is timeless, and there is no greater symbol of the movement's endurance than Mackenzie Tate's statue, the Ideal Scout, also known as the Boy Scout, an image with which so many of you are undoubtedly familiar, that of a young man in his scout uniform, holding his campaign hat in his right hand and standing with a thoughtful look on his wise-for-his-age face. The original statue stood for more than 75 years, starting in 1933, the year my dad joined Scouts, in front of the Philadelphia Scout Office. And 18 replicas around the country and other parts of the world are registered with Smithsonian Institution. I'm delighted to tell you that Patriots Path Council will soon have its own ideal Scout, and it will join a prominently displayed American flag as the focal points of our Scout Plaza that is currently being constructed at the Council Service Center in Cedar Knowles. And with this great undertaking, you can be a part of history by commemorating a special achievement, such as a loved one becoming an Eagle Scout, or by making a dedication to a retiring Scoutmaster, or by remembering a Scout or Scouter who's gone home, or by leaving another meaningful message of your own choosing. How? By purchasing a customized engraved brick that will be part of the walkway to this beautiful and inspiring monument for many decades to come. These bricks range in size from 4 by 8 inches to 12 by 12 inches and are priced from $100 to $500. Please go to ppcbsa.org slash give slash special hyphen events and click on 2020 Brick Campaign to find out how to enshrine your special message in a brick that is part of this iconic project. In addition to the Scout Plaza, there are so many other exciting things going on here in the Patriots Path Council that are designed to ensure that scouting is available to every eligible and interested youth, regardless of ability status, family background, or socioeconomic class and wherewithal to pay. As the son of a man who, as a boy, had to leave scouting because his working class parents simply couldn't afford it, and as the father of a special needs scout, these goals are extremely personal to me. So I'm excited and honored to have been asked to lead our council's Friends of Scouting campaign for this year and to serve as the chair of our Scouting Forward 2020 breakfast event. 
Scouting Forward 2020 will take place on Thursday morning, September 24th, at the Park Avenue Club in Florham Park. And I'm greatly looking forward to hearing from our event MC, scouting alumnus, two-time Super Bowl champion, former New York Giant, and current motivational speaker and youth mentor, Lee Roussan, and his former teammate, our keynote speaker, three-time Super Bowl champion, the dynamic Bart Oates, who is now an attorney here in New Jersey, the president of the NFL Alumni Association, and the father of three children, one of whom is an Eagle Scout. Let's hear a few words from Bart. Hi, everyone. I am Bart Oates, and I hope and pray that you and your loved ones are safe and healthy. I'm glad to be this year's Scouting Forward Breakfast Speaker on September 24th at the Park Avenue Club for the Patriots Path Council. I have been a supporter of the council for many years. In addition, I've been a lifelong scouter, achieving the rank of star when I was a boy. I served as a scoutmaster of Troop 102 in Emerson, New Jersey, while I was a starting center for the New York Football Giants. I am a merit badge counselor and have worked with many scouts to achieve the merit badges for personal fitness, sports, and athletics. I'm also proud to say that my son, Zach, is an Eagle Scout. So I encourage all of you to attend our breakfast and hear about my early years growing up in Southwest Georgia, my college years at Brigham Young University, to the Giants and even the 49ers winning a few Super Bowls. My friend and teammate, Lee Russon, who played for the Giants and the Cleveland Browns, will help lead the discussion. So please gather up a table of family, friends, and business associates and show your support for scouting because more than ever, scouting needs your support. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bart. I look forward to seeing you and Lee and to seeing all of you at Scouting Forward 2020. And please do your part to publicize this event in your own units and districts and to promote it among your personal and professional networks, both in and outside of scouting. Our youth is depending on it. Please go to ppcbsa.org slash give slash special hyphen events and click on Scouting Forward 2020 FOX Breakfast to register and learn how you and your contacts can get involved. Finally, a big thank you to all of you who have supported our Family Friends of Scouting campaign, IXS, or Invest in the Experience of Scouting, and an update on our Council Friends of Scouting efforts. Our Council's professional development staff and dedicated volunteers are working very hard to keep the, getting the word out with recent initiatives including an email to 17,000 member families and friends of the Patriots Path Council, a direct mail campaign to more than 10,000 past donors who had not yet renewed their 2019 gifts, concerted efforts to garner the support of the many unit leaders such as Cubmasters, Scoutmasters, and crew advisors throughout our council, including distribution of a template email that can be easily leveraged to reach out to unit families to remind them about how critical their contributions are to sustaining the program, and telephone outreach to more than 1,200 past donors. Why? Because all of us want to make sure that scouting is available to all and that it endures as it should and frankly must. So I ask and encourage all of you, all of us, to continue to help in whatever way we, as members of the Scouting family, can. Please remember, Friends of Scouting donations may be made by going to ppcbsa.org give and clicking on the blue Donate to Friends of Scouting button or by contacting your unit coordinator. Please continue empowering our youth to keep hiking that wonderful scouting trail now and into the very bright and promising future. Thank you and happy scouting. I'll see you all out there on that trail. Great, thanks Jim. At this time, we're going to have a commercial for our National Jamboree coming up in 2021. Hi, my name is Matt Pasco, and I'm a Life Scout and currently an Assistant Senior Patrol Leader in Troop 8 in Chatham and I'll be going to the 2021 National Scout Jamboree as part of the East Central Provisional Troop. And my name's Mike Fowler. I'm a Life Scout and Junior Assistant Scout Master from Troop 95 in Sparta and the Vice Chief of Program of Wapalani Lodge. And I'll be attending the 2021 National Scout Jamboree as part of the Northern Provisional Troop. Many of you watching this have been to a jamboree in the past, but for those of you who haven't, it's like summer camp dialed up to 11. Every four years, 35,000 scouts from around the country and even around the world gather for 10 days of excitement at the Summit Bechtel High Adventure Base in West Virginia. 
and this time it will be no different. The Jamboree will run from July 20th through July 30th, 2021. Uh, Patriot's Path is sending down 124 male scouts organized in four troops and up to 36 female scouts in another, all troops having four adult leaders. The theme this time is Face the Challenge. It will show that scouting uniquely prepares its members to redefine their boundaries, push past them, and emerge from the experience with the confidence that no matter the challenge, they can meet it. Mike, I went to the 2017 Jamboree, and I know you did too. Can you tell us a bit about that? I went to the 2017 Jamboree, and it was amazing. The waterfront had eight climbing icebergs, stand-up paddleboarding, scuba diving, and kayaking. For shooting sports, there's archery, crossbow, rifle, shotgun, and pistol on a dozen kinds of ranges. There's the longest zip line on the East Coast, canopy tours, BMX bikes, and a giant half-pipe course. And if that wasn't enough, there are interactive displays set up from the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard plus the National Park Service, the Forest Service, and dozens more. Here, let me show you what activities scouts can do. If you like having fun, and if you like adventure and trying new things, the Jamboree is the best place to do it. Wow, that looks amazing. Let's go live to Bridget, reporting on the scene at Summit Bechtel. Hi, I'm Bridget Brady, a Life Scout in Troop 1150 in Sparta and the ASPL. I'm also the Lodge Treasurer for Wolpilani. I'm going to the 2021 National Scout Jamboree in the Female Patriots Path Provisional Troop. I went to the 2019 World Jamboree and it was amazing. I met so many people from all around the world. I've been told that a lot of international scouts also come to the National Jamboree, so we'll get to meet kids from Australia to England and everywhere in between. Behind me, you can see all of the central area of the summit. Up on the hills around the center are the activity areas, and around the lake and to my left are the base camps Alpha through Foxtrot. We will be staying in base camp Alpha along with thousands of scouts from the Northeast region. If you look closely, you can see the Consul Energy Bridge and Camp Roads, which will be lined with scouts trading special patches that each council will bring to Jambo. In the center, you can see the amphitheater, where the two big stage shows will happen, where bands like the Plain White Tees will play songs for us, and swarms of drones will fill the sky and dazzle us with shows. We may even get to see the president speak. On the near side of the lake, there's a recreation of Brown Sea Island, a tent displaying dozens of religions that are part of the BSA, a scouting heritage presentation, and a huge training post. Back to you, Matt and Mike. Matt, Bridget mentioned patch trading. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Patch trading is huge. Every council designs a special patch set for the Jamboree. Our council is letting the scouts design the patch set, and the winner will be announced in September. In 2017, our theme was Fighting Ships of New Jersey, and in 2013, it was Classical Diners and Cars. Other councils have had themes such as Spacecrafts, Minions, the Golden State Warriors, Civil War Battlefields, Classic Cars, and Monty Python. So if you're interested in signing up, you have to be 12 years old before the Jamboree starts and under 18 by the last day. The cost is $1,780 and is payable in installments. There are also scholarships and flexible spending options available. We'll take a coach bus down and back and get three special Class B t-shirts, a Jamboree hat and neckerchief, a Jamboree patch set to keep, and more. If you recommend a friend, you'll also get a special limited time run patch. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at the handles below. Go to the Patriots Path Council website to register today. Read the directions carefully because you'll also have to create a my.scouting.org account for the scout attending and register again on the BSA National Jamboree website. Once you're registered, you'll be assigned to a provisional troop and meet once a month until June of 2021. You'll also have a mandatory camp out in April of 2021. We, we hope, hope to see you there! there. Great job, Scouts.
As somebody who's been in the last two jamborees, I look forward to going down in 2021 again. At this time, we're going to turn it over to uh, membership and Ryan O'Connor. Good evening, everyone. Hope everyone's uh, staying sane, surviving as best you can, um, and most importantly, staying safe. Um, I'm the chairman of the membership committee for the council, and as I'm sure you're well aware, it's not a surprise that membership and recruiting this year is a little bit different than in past years, and, and certainly very different than what, something that we've ever had to experience before. I'm sure for many of you who do spring recruiting, uh, you weren't able to recruit at all. And uh, a lot of you are worried about and anxious about what fall recruiting is going to look like, uh, particularly with the possibility of schools only partially open or perhaps entirely closed for some portion of the fall. Uh, we at membership have been putting together a, a couple of different ideas and activities um, to help you uh, in recruiting uh, and, and continuing membership through, through 2020. So the first thing I'll mention is, as many of, you, many of you are aware and may have attended in the past, we typically do spring recruiting or membership breakfast where we run presentations um, about membership and recruiting strategies and uh, various resources that the council has available. We recorded those presentations this year since they couldn't happen live. Uh, and you can find them on the council website. Uh, they cover topics such as social, the use of social media for recruiting, geofencing, uh, the resources uh, and tools that are available to you from council, many of them which are entirely free of charge, um, and some strategies for community involvement and engagement, uh, even whether you're talking Zoom meetings, outdoor activities, or typical recruiting processes, what you can do. To, to recruit. So we would encourage you to go online and find those presentations and take some time to view them. Each of them is a, between uh, 15 and 30 minutes long, and we think it's well worth your time to check it out. The second thing that I'll mention is that this summer we're hoping to put on uh, six recruiting carnivals in July and six in August, one in each of the districts in July and one in each of the districts in August. Uh, we are currently finalizing the dates uh, and the locations for those, but um, as I mentioned, each of them will be throughout council. The idea being that this will be an opportunity for potential and current um, and future scouts youth to come and enjoy and see what scouting is all about. Obviously, we're working on some of the logistics in terms of social distancing and potential limitations on the amount of people that can be in a single place at a single time, but we're hoping to do these at large outdoor spaces where we can safely and comfortably and compliance with whatever executive orders and, and legal requirements, have a good time and show off scouting in the community. Uh, the membership committee will be staffing these along with uh, essentially all of the staff from council. Uh, it's an all hands on deck um, endeavor. We anticipate that there'll be camping displays. Uh, we're hoping to get approval for, you know, a, a mobile pop-up BB and archery ranges at these activities. Uh, there'll be some, you know, limited food and beverages. There'll be, um, it, it'll essentially be mobile summer camp, some portions of mobile summer camp in these various spaces. Uh, we are inviting, and you may have already heard from your uh, district, membership representative, we're inviting a lot of units to assist and participate in this activity because we're hoping that this can, these membership carnivals can serve as uh, an opportunity to uh, replace or supplement your traditional fall recruiting. Uh, so we would invite units to seek out more information. You can go to the Scouting From Home website and there's a link there. You can also contact me or contact your district membership representative who's going to have more information on this. Uh, I, I would encourage you all to be excited, start talking about it in your meetings, start or continue to have meetings here even here in the pandemic, uh, and stay tuned uh, because as soon as we can firm up the details and get approvals based on the changing landscape of state regulations, uh, we intend to really uh, go full full force on these and, and hopefully get youth out in the community um, and show off scouting and all that scouting can do, particularly in a time where uh, a lot of youth are ready to get out of the house and a lot of their parents are also ready to get those youth out. The last thing that I'll mention briefly on the membership and recruiting aspect is that uh, for those of you who don't already utilize geofencing technology, we would encourage you to do so. Um, leave it uh, one of the modules, one of the training modules that we did this year that you, again, the recordings that you can find involve 
an int a brief introduction to geofencing and how exactly you can use it as a recruiting tool. And I, I won't go on for long about it today, but it, it, in effect, it's a way to tailor your advertising, your digital advertising uh, and, and recruiting efforts to particular areas uh, so that you know, a troop in Chatham Township is not trying to attract attention from um, folks who live in Sussex or in Bridgewater. Uh, the idea being that if you can tailor your Facebook or social media advertising and recruiting to uh, interested parents of youth in your area, that it's going to be better bang for your buck and a better um, expenditure of your, your time and money and unit resources. So again, if you have any questions regarding recruiting efforts uh, or the membership carnivals, which are scheduled for July and August, please feel free to contact me or contact your commissioners or district representatives who can give you some more information. Great, thank you, Ryan. Uh, at this time, we're gonna have a, a video from Michael Merritt on Scout Book. Hello, Patriots, Path Scouts and Scouters. This is Michael Merritt, Vice President of Program Impact. But talking to you today because of my role as the Black River District Merit Badge Dean. I wanted to let you know of a project that I've been working on with the other five district deans who compile and um, update and distribute the Merit Badge Counselor List to unit leaders within the district. Last month, the Advancement Committee decided to augment this by uploading all of the Merit Badge Counselor data to the Scout Book application. This means we have 810 counselors and over 3,000 badges, which can now be accessed uh, via the Scoutbook app. That means leaders can look up counselors, assign them to scouts, and the scouts and parents will get an email. Then the counselors can use the Scoutbook app to um, update and uh, pass requirements or complete badges in an electronic version of the paper blue card that's much more consistent with today's pandemic environment. So just a, a quick overview of this resource. Um, let's see if I can share the screen. And I apologize, by the way, for the poor audio quality um, trapped with a bad microphone. So the Scoutbook app is both an app you can run on your phone, but also a website you can visit from your computer. Um, this is the landing page. You log in with the same credentials you use for my.scouting, for instance, where you would go to uh, log in and take your youth protection training. From there, counselors, for example, will see that they can um, do data entry for entire badges or individual requirements for the scouts that have been assigned to them. The Scoutbook site is full of an enormous amount of orientation information and helpful um, uh, documents and forums that you can look to for help, but because that can be a little bit overwhelming, if you go to the Council Advancement Committee website, this project is highlighted at the moment right at the top, and there's some helpful information depending on your role as a scoutmaster or a unit leader. So there's a link to directly how you can assign merit badge counselors to a scout. There's information about this uh, merit badge counselor list project. And uh, there's a guide for merit badge counselors on how to use this application. We've also uploaded um, a one-page PDF that you can link to there that uh, for scout leaders to figure out how to quickly come up to speed with this Scoutbook app if you're not familiar with it. So this is really the preferred version of the um, uh, blue card to use in a socially distanced way. Um, if you're left with any questions or issues, then you can just go back to the Advancement Committee webpage and reach out to me directly. Um, so I hope that you're able to take advantage of this forum uh, and uh, application, and um, in particular of the over 800 volunteers who are standing ready to help make the great DSA program work for you in today's challenging environment. Thanks very much.
Great, thank you. Thanks, Michael. And uh, there is that survey there on the screen. So if you could go ahead and click the answers on there. And uh, just as a side note, scout book is an option. It's not required. Paper blue cards are still an option. And merit badge counselor list will be distributed to unit leaders as they have in the past. Uh, but it is another option. Uh, as somebody who's done several merit badges now on Zoom through Facebook, uh, uh, through scout book, it is uh, very easy and very convenient. Uh, at this time, we are going to have a video on community service by Linda Cummings. Hi, everyone. Scouting was founded on the principle of service to others. The goal of the Community Service Committee is to foster that ideal, to assist units in achieving their community service objectives, and to recognize units and scouts who perform service to others. To find out information on the Community Service Committee, go to the Council website, click on Committees, and then Community Service. There you can find email addresses for myself and for all of the district chairpersons. Please reach out to your district chair or myself with any questions on service. Our council has its own service awards program called SERVE. It is designed to recognize all participants in council programs each year for their hours of public service. The program counts hours between December 1st and November 30th each year. There are three levels of awards, bronze, silver, and gold. As a leader, you can choose to award as each level is achieved throughout the year or wait till the end of the year and issue the award based on the level it has been achieved. The form you need to fill out is on the community service website. Simply fill it out and bring it into the scout shop to purchase your pin. We also award annually in each district community service patches for the units with the most hours and or the most hours per scouts. In 2019, our winners were in Black River, Pack 45, Pack 147, Troop 312, Troop 390. In Fishawak, we had Pack 40, Troop 79, Troop 8, and Crew 314. In Muncie, we had Pack 145, Troop 23, Troop 145. Raritan Valley had Pack 96, Troop 12, and Troop 41. Sussex was Pack 183, Troop 85, and Crew 85. And in Watchung Mountain, we had Pack 177 and Troop 73. The patches and streamers are in and we will be reaching out to the units to see what's the best way we can get them to you. Congratulations to all the winning units. Throughout the year, we will host council service projects as well as district projects. In the past, we have hosted clothing drives at the Klondikes, blood drives, scouting for food, and collecting for toys for tots. Please make sure that you record your service hours. During this time, I know that many scouts and leaders are doing good turns. Whether it's helping a sibling with school work, helping a neighbor, checking out family and friends, donating items or time. If you have any pictures or would like to share any stories, please email me. Just last week, our reporting system changed. If you are currently using Scoutbook, you can now enter your service on hours on there with the exception of Eagle Hours and there is no need to switch to the national reporting site. I will be sending out an email soon with more information with these changes to the reporting service hours. Thank you all. Continue to do your good turns while following the BSA guidelines and local and state guidelines. Be well, thanks. Great, thanks Linda and congratulations to all the winning units with all those amazing hours of service. At this time, we're going to have a video from Sue Carter on scouting from home. Hey, good evening, Patriots Path Scouters. I'm Sue Carter and a volunteer with the Council, currently helping with the Scouting from Home webpage. This page was launched in early April to help scouts and units continue with the scouting program while keeping safe at home as our area moved to shelter at home. It serves as a landing page for scouting programs and activities that can be done at home or virtually, such as merit badge classes, activities to help with rank requirements, and other programs and activities for units, families, scouts, and scouts' friends, 
And if their friends are not scouts, we hope they'll join soon. This page provides a place that you can go to to look at uh, activities and programs that might interest you to find something to do with further your scouting requirements or just for fun. And there's something for everyone on the page. There's a section for Cub Scout related items for advancement, um, activities, events. Scouts BSA is in another section. There's a section for resources for working on merit badges. We've also just listed some general activities and virtual events and activities our partners are doing um, that you may want to do as a family or as a unit or individually. Some items are run by other councils, so you might get to meet scouts in other areas of the country if you sign up for them. That's a bonus. And there are lots of programs and activities posted, so I hope you'll explore the Scouting From Home page if you haven't already. And as a PSA, I'm letting you know it's also available as a link on our Patriots Path app. You might wonder how items find their way to the page, and unfortunately, it's not by that. Mostly the items are obtained by searching the web for appropriate resources, as well as searching websites of our partners that we've worked with in the past to see what they're offering that can be done from home and are also appropriate for scouting. We have some volunteer council webmasters and they're adding to the page to keep it updated as well. We also take email suggestions from Scouters and Patriots Path of resources that they've found and think would be helpful for other scouts to know about. If you have items that you think belong in Scouting From Home, please share them with us at scoutingfromhome at gmail.com. We'd also love to hear about scouting and other adventures you've been doing from home, whether it's for rank advancement, community service, or fun. So if you want to share them, we'd love to hear about them. You can send us a write-up or have a scout send a write-up. Uh, we'd love to have pictures too, if you like, and we'll post them on Scouting From Home. Remember, our email is scoutingfromhome at gmail.com. Did I say scouting from home enough? We've also had another page on our website relating to scouting activities for about 10 years that hosts programs, events, and activities offered by Patriots Path, as well as its partners, our partners. Originally called Cub Opportunities, it's recently been renamed to Scout Opportunities because it now includes resources for Scouts VSA as well as for Cub Scouts. And in general, the activities, a lot of the activities are also for families. So what should happen to the Scouting From Home page? We plan to continue updating the Scouting From Home page through the summer, enabling those who want to or need to participate in scouting virtually or from home, have a place of reference and to find um, opportunities. But we'd like feedback from you about long-term plans um, that we need to make for the Scouting From Home page. Uh, so please take our poll and let us know. Should we keep Scouting From Home as a separate page? Should we add the items on Scouting From Home to the Scout Opportunities page? Or do you feel that the resources on the Scouting From Home page are no longer needed or only needed for a certain time, say through 2020? So please let us know. Thanks and keep safely scouting. Good night. Thank you, Sue. At this time, I just want to touch on a couple of things as we wrap up our town hall meeting. The first is our senior patrol leader roundtables that will be coming up in June. I want to thank uh, Jesse and all the airmen from the lodge that are going to be help facilitating this with our senior patrol leaders throughout the council. Uh, these will be held for the most part during actual roundtables. We'll have a breakout session for the youth to go in there and they can brainstorm and talk about uh, best practices during and after the quarantine period. Uh, we will have adult moderators in there and we would ask that any adults that log into that breakout session, please let the youth run it. This is a youth event and we want to hear their thoughts and let them share ideas and brainstorm together. Currently, we have Black River set for June 2nd at 7.25. Fishawak is set for June 3rd at 7.30. Sussex, June 3rd at 7.30. Watchung Mountain is June 18th at 7.30. And Muncie and Raritan Valley are to be determined, so please look for those dates and times for the SPL roundtables. The trade show scouting that we were all supposed to be at tonight is currently tentatively planned for August 10th at the Birchwood Manor. It would be from 12 noon to 8 p.m. 
And of course, this is pending uh, governor executive orders, social distancing and gathering uh, quota. So more information to come on that. Uh, we should be able to have a definitive decision on this if it's going to be on August 10th by the probably within the next two weeks, depending on executive orders. Next is uh, membership fees. So there's been a lot of talk out there about uh, increased membership fees. And here is the uh, official uh, flyer. And this will be going out in formal communications tomorrow from the council. But as you can see, effective August 1st, all new members will have uh, these new fees. And uh, participants in our program uh, will be $66 a year. Exploring program is $42 a year, and our volunteers, whether they're in a unit position or non-unit position, is also $42 a year. Volunteers with multiple registrations will continue to pay for only one position. Effective August 1st, there is a new youth member joining fee. It's a one-time fee of $25, and there is no prorating on that. So when a new member joins, no matter when they join during the program year, it is a $25 fee. There's also a $12 insurance fee and an $18 activity fee. And as I said, this will be formally coming out tomorrow through a formal communication. So please look for that coming out. At this time, PPC Outfitters. Uh, Andrew, if we could throw that up on the screen there. All righty, we have a coupon code. That is good for 10% off your purchase at PPC Outfitters beginning tomorrow and running through June 14th. So that, again, as Mr. Spaldo said earlier, this is our online store through the Scout Shop. And if you don't see something you want on there, contact the Scout Shop. We might be able to get it for mm -hmm. you. We'd be happy to help you out. So if you don't see it, just ask. At this time, I would like to turn the conversation over to our Scout Executive, Mark Andreo, who will go ahead and help uh, answer your questions. And I turn it over to our Scout Executive. Hi everyone, Mark Andreo, Scout Executive for Patriots Path Council. We had, uh, we have over 300 uh, volunteers. It peaked around 320 uh, on our town hall tonight. Not as ideal as being at the trade show or scouting, which would have been my first. But uh, uh, thanks to our volunteers and our staff, uh, we've done a nice job improvising for this. Uh, thus far, we've answered a little over 40 questions uh, through our chat feature. And there are a couple that we'll go ahead and address with everybody uh, right now. Uh, but first, uh, I wanted to just share some of the poll results with everybody because uh, kind of interesting to read it. Um, the first was PPC Outfitters, and uh, the, the, the majority of our uh, participants uh, were looking for PPC branded uh, materials uh, there. Oh, thanks, Andrew. Uh, so nice to see that. And uh, still a lot of people, you know, still the far majority would like to pick up these types of things in our scout shops. Uh, next poll, it was uh, on scout book, there it is. And great to see that 71% of our units are, are utilizing scout book. And we got a couple of comments that maybe we weren't asking that question quite right. So based on the feedback we got there, we wanna make sure we continue to to offer training and information so that people can utilize it. And finally, the uh, scouting, uh, the scouting from home homepage, uh, great response to that there uh, with 66% uh, preferring to keep it as a separate page. And uh, as you can see, I'll, I'll, the duration of scouting from home the, the thing that sticks out to me there is, um, you know, 96% of the people on the call tonight are excited to see it continue in some form. So uh, thanks for participating in those. And uh, there were a couple of, uh, of questions and um, I'll, I'll handle the first one was uh, regarding membership fees. And, uh, you know, there's no, you know, we'll be sharing tomorrow, uh, as Archer mentioned, uh, the details on that, including FAQs and any other information uh, that folks might need. 
there was also one or two questions on the BSA national bankruptcy. So I'll ask Mark Talmadge, our council president, to, um, to go ahead and uh, unmute, give us a little bit of an update there and uh, maybe a, a parting word or two. <laughs> Thank you for telling me to unmute. I appreciate that. So um, questions about the BSA bankruptcy and what's happening. Uh, the one question that was asked referred to uh, the national annual meeting as being brutal. And um, I will say this, that the, the messaging was, was difficult and in, in some ways disturbing, uh, but it's a very difficult time right now. Of course, the national uh, organization is in bankruptcy in the US, uh, United States Bankruptcy Court in Delaware. No local councils have declared bankruptcy. PPC has not and does not intend to. So the question becomes, what's happening? Well, let me tell you that we have a, a special committee of the executive board to address uh, and monitor the bankruptcy. Um, at this point, uh, the vast majority of, of the 261 local councils have submitted information to uh, BSA National to facilitate mediation with respect to uh, the bankruptcy and hopefully a negotiated settlement with uh, basically the tort claimants committee. And uh, obviously I think most people are aware that what's driving the bankruptcy are the um, abuse claims. And, uh, and let me first tell you that um, 90% or more of the claims uh, date back uh, to 1980 and earlier. So most of them, 90% are 40 years or more old. Uh, so that, that's what we're dealing with, and that's what's driving this. Um, we are monitoring the situation at this point. Uh, it is clear that the Tort Claims Committee will be looking to the local councils to contribute to a settlement, but it's way too early. Uh, to know how many claimants there are and what type of commitment may be required by the local councils to participate and get a release of all of these claims. Uh, but I can tell you that we are um, on top of it. Um, we are monitoring it closely. We are working with a national uh, committee uh, called the Ad Hoc Committee of Local Councils, which are looking out for the interests of local councils. Uh, and we are, um, you know, basically, uh, we have to take a watch, wait and see attitude at the moment uh, with respect to what's happening. Um, it, it's a very detailed subject matter. Uh, I could spend an hour easily talking about some of the legal issues and I don't want to do that. But I welcome if anybody has, uh, you know, detailed questions, they're welcome to contact me uh, at my email or through counsel. Back to you, Mark. Thanks, Mark. And uh, two things just to uh, mention to everybody in regards to bankruptcy. Um, you know, when Mark talks about 90% um, of, of these claims predating 1980, our volunteers could certainly attest to scouting has been a very safe environment for decades. Our youth protection programs work. Our leaders like you are, are required to, uh, to take it and take a test every year. And we need our volunteers and our families, making sure people understand uh, what a safe environment it is. And um, so uh, on a little more happy note, Keith uh, DeLugas has been answering, so you'll want to unmute too, Keith, uh, a whole bunch of questions on, on summer camp, whether it would be social distancing or our specialty camps, um, executive orders, you name it. Um, Keith, would you give a little bit of information just so this group understands? Briefly, um, uh, some highlights on Day Camp, PPC Academy, and our summer plans for Winnebago. Sure. First, I'm going to start with the, the most important one to me, and that's why can't you sign up for Cub Day Camp right now? And uh, we'll reopen the Cub Day Camp sign up on Thursday. Um, so just watch our camping pages for that. We, we had to hold up to make sure that every scout and parent that had registered previously um, had the opportunity to change their registration to um, the new style program that we have to deal with. Um, as far as executive orders go, well, the, our governor um, changes the rules on me every day, and uh, I love him for that. 
uh, keeps me on my toes. Uh, we have a lobbyist working with the state health department and the governor's office working to um, to get our resident camps operating. So step one was to get all the day camps in the state of New Jersey able to operate. And that was a big battle. And now for the next um, hurdle is our resident camps. And, and they're working fiendishly to uh, talk to governor into releasing that. And we're still anticipating a positive result from that. That's why we're continuing with the uh, Winnebago program. Um, Somebody had a question about busing and camp, and are we doing busing? Well, we are not doing busing this year. Um, we can't ensure the social distancing on busing, and we can't control that. We also, our bus company, ha um, because there's no school and they're a school bus company, um, they don't have the staff to ac accommodate our uh, program this summer. So it, it's kind of twofold. It's a safety problem, and it is. Um, a matter of the bus company just doesn't have the resources to provide. Um, with specialty week, somebody asked if we will open uh, registration on specialty week. And again, that's planned for Thursday. We put a hold on uh, registrations for that until we could give um, everybody the opportunity to um, say yes, they wanted to continue with their registration or they wanted a refund. Um, Somebody asked uh, PPC Outdoor Academy, um, why does it cost money for merit badges? Well, quite simply, we have costs um, incurred in operating that program, and we're just passing on the minimal cost that we can to, to function that program. Some other councils do it differently. Um, this is the way we chose to do it. Uh, social distancing, how's social distancing gonna work at camp? Um, well, I could give you a cop-out answer and say, if you go to the camping homepage, you will, um, you'll see our two webinars, one for Cub Scout Camp and one for uh, Scouts Resident Camp on there. Click on them. They were our uh, webinars that we did last week, and they have a host of uh, information on uh, social distancing guidelines and everything. But essentially, um, each, uh, each Scout will be no matter which camp they're going to, Scouts BSA Resident Camp or Cub Scout Day Camp, they will be put into a group or a pod or a patrol or a unit. Um, I prefer the term pod because the CDC has been using pods for a while. So each scout will be put into a pod. That pod will social distance um, with will social distance from other pods. They will not have to social distance from each other. The social distancing practice from the CDC is to um, control contact tracing. So if we keep the scouts to a pod of 10 scouts, 10 to 12 scouts, then we know who they've been in direct contact with. We know the exposure. Um, and as we do our pre-camp um, pre medical checks and, and all of our paperwork for that, um, we can start to uh, really hone in on eliminating the uh, the uh, transmission of the COVID-19 virus. So for social distancing, they'll be put into pods. The pods will travel around camp together. They'll do everything together. They'll eat together. Um, and they'll be social distanced from other pods. So uh, they can continue with their program. Um, at Cub Day Camp, the, the program's pretty much normal as it has been over the past 50 years or so, um, the dens will travel around the different program areas. As far as the Scouts BSA program, yes, that's a little different. We can't, we can't really do function in using the pods or this patrol setup and offer a merit badge program because units will be hard pressed to be able to put 12 Scouts together that want to take the exact same merit badge that's being offered at handicraft or ecology. So the summer camp program is going to be an experiential learning program. It'll build upon all the scout skills and it'll develop scout skills and it'll develop your unit into um, better, stronger patrols, troop and uh, troop leaders as well. Um, we'll be using the edge method and teaching the edge method and letting the scouts use the edge method to um, teach those younger scouts some of the skills and work together and it'll all build up into uh, a pretty cool, fun program. I like to use the example that at 
Camp Summers Metal Work Merit Badge does a sheet metal project using all different kinds of tools. Where at Winnebago, they do blacksmithing. And let me tell you, we have the equipment, we have the uh, forges and the anvils and stuff like that, and nothing beats hammering on that, on that uh, iron to make something cool. And so the scouts at Winnebago will be able to do things like that this summer. They won't be working on the merit badge. They certainly will be completing some of the requirements for the merit badges, though. So if, uh, if you're a unit leader, you might want to just think about how we can uh, keep track of those and maybe issue some blue cards when we get to camp. And uh, we'll have a lot of partials that we can complete during the year. But um, in order to practice that good social distancing, we have to do the pod method or they won't let us open. So we can't do merit badges. Um, yeah, that's uh, all the questions that I didn't get to answer online. It's really important for you to keep an eye on our camping homepage at ppcbsa.org uh, and, um, and uh, watch for the updates. We'll probably have another webinar as we get closer to camp for Scouts BSA. And, uh, we want to try to offer some family camping opportunities this summer. So um, just a quick little uh, poll here is uh, what activities would you be interested in on a family camping weekend? And so if you could just uh, fill that out so that we have some information so we can start planning uh, some of those events as the governor frees up our opportunities for uh, camp, in-person camp. Right. Nice job there, Keith. Don't uh, mute yourself just yet. First, thank you to, uh, to Keith, his staff, and our volunteer outdoor program team uh, and camping committee. Uh, they've been through a host of A to Z type of options for summer camp. And as the, the state changes things on a day-by-day -day basis, we're proud to be the council uh, that will be offering live camp this summer as long as the, uh, the government allows us to. Um, one of the questions, Keith, that just came in, I'll try and answer it, was with day camp changing from five days to three, uh, why hasn't there been a, uh, an adjustment in cost based on busing? I believe the answer is we have reduced that price based on the busing uh, option not being there. Is that correct? That is correct. The three-day option is um, $190. Um, and again, if you just go on our website, if, if you've already signed up, you should have received about four emails from us asking you how you wanted to, us to handle your registration. If you haven't received those emails, um, tomorrow shoot Bridget Capen or I an email and we'll put that in the question and answer our email address. Um, but reach out to us and we'll be able to help you through that res reservation process. Um, but yes, we've uh, reduced the, uh, the Wheeler fee to $190. Um, for the uh, regional day camps, we did not reduce the fee because be quite honest with you, um, the fee remained the same um, and our costs increased. So uh, we, we've kind of held fast not to increase any prices this summer for the families, um, but yet we're trying to offer a program Thanks, Keith. And uh, similar with Winnebago, uh, there were a couple of questions over the past week or two about the pricing and uh, with increased food costs with personal protection equipment being required. Um, you know, the council has made the, the tough decision to uh, forego what, what would normally be a modest profit on our camps in order to deliver program. And, and we're proud to do that because the most important thing is our kids getting out to a live camp this summer, if it's possible and if it's safe. Um, there was a question early on about in-person activities such as uh, border reviews and service projects. Um, our, our units have been doing a, a great job. Bruce Benson, our, our council advancement chair, Michael Merritt, our program impact VP, have done a nice job to ensure that border reviews are done virtually. And uh, although some of our, our units are, are getting in service projects here or there, we're, we're, we're gonna to continue to keep people updated through our Monday message. And, uh, and we do monitor everything that happens with the government on a daily basis. And we look forward to sharing some good news uh, about some in-person gatherings uh, for, our, for our units. Um, we know everybody misses being together, uh, but at the same time, we wanna make sure uh, precept of scouting is participating citizenship. And we wanna make sure 
we respect that as guidance from the state. Um, and Mark? I, yes, sir. Let me uh, ask, answer one question that was asked, and um, I don't know that I have the best answer, but the question was asked, how is national justifying the fee, membership fee increase? Um, I don't know that national is necessarily justifying it by any other reason um, than they're in difficult financial times. Uh, and they also asked whether they, you know, how could it be justified since we lost, you know, a half year program well, the fee increases for next year. Hopefully, we'll have a full year program. Uh, but I think the, the 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 easy answer or the short answer is National is in uh, difficult financial straits because of the uh, ongoing lawsuits and the bankruptcy proceedings, and that's that's the reason. That's a great point, Mark. And two things on on the uh, the membership fees. First, as everybody uh, probably on this call knows. Um, those fees that are paid to national, um, the, uh, the the bulk of the increase has been based on purchasing insurance, liability insurance for today, not for anything that happened in the past, but the cost of liability insurance has been going up. Uh, we used to self-insure ourselves as an organization, the Boy Scouts of America, but um, in recent years, we've had to move to uh, purchasing insurance for liability for anything, whether it be uh, abuse claims or accidents at camp, uh, things that happen uh, at our scout meetings. It's, uh, you know, and they have done some Q and A's and, uh, you know, they, that's where the bulk of that cost is being offset. Something also to know is that our council, a hundred percent of everything beyond that, that national fee stays local. So whether it be your camp fees, um, your, um, your um, friends of scouting donations, or, or fees just for program activities. We manage that locally. It's Patriots Path Council. It doesn't get passed on to national, doesn't get mixed up in any sort of bankruptcy or even potential bankruptcy uh, that, that, that could be coming down the pike. So we want to just remind everybody that that does absolutely stay local. I'm going to look through to see. We answered about 60 questions, and I think we got all the big ones. Um, I want to thank our families. I want to thank our volunteers for um, continuing to uh, be supportive of scouting even through these these challenging times. I want to thank our presenters tonight. I want to thank our panelists, especially our youth panelists who did an absolutely awesome job uh, in, in delivering their messages a lot better than perhaps the adults uh, did it tonight. Also want to thank Andrew Joyner, our council uh, program director, who uh, did all the technical stuff for this. Um, not a small undertaking. We want to keep the message positive because scouting's got some great things going on. We're looking forward to uh, being on the other side of this and uh, you know, seeing you at camp, seeing you through scouting activities as uh, just as soon as we possibly can. So. Uh, Again, thank you for all you're doing. Archer, I'll turn it to you to close this out. Great, Mark, thank you. Um, I'd like to uh, echo that and, and thank all of our volunteers for everything they do, they do for scouting. Uh, to our panelists tonight, everyone did a great job for those that were live and those that did their videos. Uh, they put a lot of work into it and they, it shows how much they care about the program. Uh, I wanna thank everybody for calling in and participating in our first virtual town hall meeting. Uh, I thought it was a great success. And on behalf of our council executive, Mark Andreo, our council president, Mark Talmadge, and myself, Archer Jones, your council commissioner, I thank you for all that you do. Stay well, stay safe, and stay scout strong. Good night, everybody.